Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. Breaking news alert on the coronavirus cases in the region. The state of North Dakota is reporting two dozen new positive cases in the state. That brings the new total to 365. The death toll remains at nine. 13 people are currently listed as in the hospital and 142 have recovered from the virus. Many of the new cases are reported in Grand Forks and Cass counties. Three of those new cases are for people between the ages of 10 and 19. In Minnesota, the death toll continues to rise there. Eight more fatalities have been reported, bringing the state total to 87 deaths. The Department of Health is also reporting a total of 1,809 cases in the state. 197 people are in the hospital and 93 of them are in the ICU. 970 people are listed as recovered. Also breaking news this afternoon, a spokesperson with Sanford Hospital in Fargo says 19 employees have tested positive for COVID-19 and 10 people are currently hospitalized with the virus at Sanford. Sanford also says that most of the new cases are happening from people who got it from someone who had tested positive. Another cool spring day out there, but hopefully the sun should start to peep out a little later today. To see what we can expect in our Wednesday forecast, let's head on out to First Alert Storm Team meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli. And thank you, Jordan. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, temperatures continue their very cold trend as low temperatures well below where they should be this time of year. A normal low this time of year, 33 degrees. Let's take a look at the lows across the region for this morning. Most of us into the mid to upper teens, although some areas into the upper single digits, especially out toward Bemidji and Park Rapids. Now, we've rebounded nicely. Temperatures uh, right now into the upper 20s to lower 30s, depending on where you are. Now, the wind is is uh, in the process of flipping from a northerly direction to a southerly direction. Right now, wind speeds are between 10 and 20 miles per hour, and that's giving us just a little bit of a wind chill, most of us into the teens and 20s. We got mainly clear skies uh, in our northern counties right now and out toward Jamestown. More clouds as you look off to the south and southeast. And with the blue on the map, you can just see some areas, especially just south of Lisbon and north of Detroit Lakes, having some snow showers or snow flurries, you really can't get rid of those. So as we make our way through the afternoon, we will have partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies and temperatures are going to be well below average again for this time of year into the upper 30s. But as soon as we get that southerly wind, a nice turnaround plus a very dry weather pattern. We'll have the details on that, the full seven day forecast coming up later in the newscast. I look forward to it. Thank you, Justin. We have new information this afternoon on the deadly house fire in Grand Forks. Police now say the victim is 63 year old Charles Courier, who was found dead in his home. Investigators say they responded to Courier's home at 2461 Estabrook Drive in Grand Forks for a welfare check last night. That's when they found Courier inside the home. Officials say there was an obvious fire damage to the home that happened a few days earlier. The cause of that fire and the cause of death have not yet been released. People living in Bagley, Minnesota now have a curfew. The police department says the curfew was put in place because of a recent increase in property crimes. The curfew is from 10 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. every day, including weekends. Police say it's not permanent, but it will be in place until May 10th. Some people are exempt from that curfew, including emergency responders, health care providers, military members, or utility workers, to name just a few of the exemptions. Six people are in jail after a drug raid in northern North Dakota. The Roulette County Sheriff's Office says investigators searched two homes along with several sheds yesterday morning in the county. There, they found prescription drugs, guns, and equipment for drug dealing. Formal charges will likely be filed sometime today. New at noon, Minnesota State University Moorhead is cutting 66 paid positions from its payroll over the next two years. The university says it will need to cut 10% from its entire operating budget to make up for a $6 million budget shortfall by 2022. Some programs are getting cut or suspended include advertising, international studies, and Spanish education, to name a few. A total of 10 majors are getting cut or suspended, impacting 175 students. We'll have more on the cuts that are happening at the university on this story on the VNL News app. Also new at noon, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz signed into law the Alex Smith Insulin Affordability Act today. That bill is named after a young man who died because he couldn't afford his insulin. 
The new law will let diabetics buy a 30-day supply of insulin for a $35 copay. It will also mandate pharmaceutical companies give pharmacies refills of the drug or face fines. One Minnesota treasure is celebrating her 112th birthday, all while social distancing, of course. Gage Curriton shares her story. <laughs> oh my. This is a Erna lot. Zahn is celebrating 112 years of life, albeit from the safety of her residence at Oak Hills Living Center in New Ulm. While visitation isn't allowed at Oak Hills, the community still came to her to make it a special day. And she kept saying, oh my, oh my. She just couldn't believe it. One of the trucks had her name in tape, really big, and then 112 with a great big heart. And there were banners and posters, and it was, it was just amazing. Erna is a lifelong lover of horses, whom she started riding at an early age. And last year, family, friends, and staff surprised her with a special visit. And I was wheeling her out to the horses, and she saw the horses, and she goes, where's the saddle? I mean, like, she wanted to ride, seriously, at 111. Today's celebration may have not been as busy as last year's celebration, but it was equally as special. People started coming through again just because they wanted to wave to her. And by the end, some of the staff were coming outside to go to her window. She was blowing kisses to everyone and thanking them for the birthday wishes, so that was cool. To protect residents' safety, visitors and even family aren't allowed to enter the building. But staff are doing all they can to help them during these unprecedented times. You know what? It's a challenge for, for not just Erna, but the other 75 residents that we're dealing with that are in confinement. They're actually quarantined to their room. The activity staff is doing a lot of one-to-one -one visits. We take our portable piano in and we play to them. I take my guitar in and I sing to them. We're just doing our best to visit with them and keep them, keep them happy that way. At 112, Erna stands behind her secret to a long life. And from the sounds of it, it's something a lot of people could get behind. Fortunate for Erna is she loves to sleep, so she eats her breakfast. That's what she claims uh, has helped her to live this long, is that she eats her breakfast. And perhaps her sense of humor as well. Erna would come to social hour every Friday, and she'd always have a glass of red wine. Of course, we can't do that anymore. But up until COVID-19, she was still coming to social hour every Friday, having her glass of red wine. And I loved asking her if she wanted a second class because she would usually come up with something like, see that lampshade over there? It could end up on my head if I have another glass of wine. In New Ulm, Gage Kirtan, KEYC News Now. We love it, Erna. A glass of red wine and breakfast. That's something we can all get behind. Happy birthday. Coming up here at noon, the coronavirus could be affecting where you could buy meat and how much it would cost. How a major South Dakota plant is playing into this, that's a little later in our newscast. But next, Justin Fanfarelli is in with just how cool we started our day and when we can finally expect a little heat out there.